Good evening, everyone. It gives me immense pride and at the same time a lot of reverence to introduce a living legend of our times, people's doctor, Padma Bhushan Dr. B. M. Hegde. He is an internationally acclaimed physician, cardiologist, medical scientist, educationalist, author of many books and orator par excellence. He is admired for his humane, holistic and integrated approach of dealing with people and medical care. Honorable Dr. Hegde has received many awards, honors, fellowships from all over the globe. Dr. Hegde has numerous qualifications to his profile, including MD from King's George Medical College, University of Lucknow, MBBS from Stanley Medical College, Madras University, and various other fellowships that includes FRCP, FACC, FRCGP, MRCP, FAMS, from various prestigious medical schools in UK, US, Europe, and India. Dr. Hegde has been a teacher for more than five decades. A distinguished personality, he has many credentials that includes currently being editor-in-chief of the Journal of Science of Healing Outcomes, former visiting professor and affiliate professor to many medical schools in US, UK and India. He was former vice chancellor of Manipal University too. Dr. Hegde has been a deserving recipient of numerous national and international awards including Padma Bhushan, Dr. B.C. Roy National Award, Dr. J.C. Bo Bose Award for Life Science Research, Pride of India Award from the U.S. and Honorary Doctorates. He has served in various trusts and is widely respected for his philanthropic acts. Dr. Hegde doctorates Indian way of integrated healing systems including breathing techniques, yoga, Ayurveda, clubbed with other healing systems and methods. Please give me a big round of applause for Dr. B.M. Hegde. I now request Dr. Prabodh and Dr. Pradeep to felicitate Honorable Dr. Hegde on behalf of Prabodh Educational Trust with Certificate of Excellence for his distinctive contribution in the field of health and spirituality. Big round of applause. I now request Dr. Hegde to enlighten us with his keynote address on modern life and spirituality. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Hegde. This naughty girl has been like a leech, would never leave me for the last about a year. Actually, you know, they have been after me for a couple of years now, but unfortunately I couldn't make it. Now I feel so sorry that I didn't come here earlier because they are doing God's work. Friends, I am totally confused now. Totally confused. I don't know what to tell you and what to talk. Because I saw so many good things, so many creative things, so many innovative things and so many good things happening to mankind that all my depression about mankind being the enemy of mankind is almost wearing out slowly after seeing all of you. Because I always go around telling people that man's greatest enemy is man today. And it's nice to know there are human beings in this world who really mean paropakarartam idam shariram. You're all varied professionals belonging to several organizations, doing so many good things and doing very well. It's not because you're not doing well that you left that, but you voluntarily left that for the greatest calling on this planet by God on mankind, do something for others. And that is, that is what gives me so much happiness 
that words don't come out at all. But let me start off. Prabodh and all his gang, I would call them, of do-gooders. Let me at the outset thank you all for allowing me to come and meet with all of you. Because this, you know, this, this is such a nice feeling that you forget the whole world worries when you see good people doing good work. And uh, all the brothers and sisters of this wonderful city, Nagpur, where I keep coming now and then. And it's a wonderful place. I like oh, everybody here. Plus, I like the Maharashtrian food that we had this afternoon. <laughs> it was Sapna selection. We had very nice, uh, what did we have? Kadi and we had uh, Bakrika. Um, Bagri. Bagri. Bak <laughs> oh, Bakri is goat, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What is that? Okay, okay. Whatever. And, but the last thing was very good. Mango. Amarkan, Amarkan. So nice. So nice. That was the bonus of coming to Nagpur. Friends, people say he has done this, he has done that. Don't believe them. I now almost feel like echoing what one of those great people of Germany, of yore, von Johanna Goethe said one day. He said, I now know philosophy, physiology, jurisprudence, and even alas, theology. How much? From end to end, with labor keen. But here I stand, O fool, with all my lore, no wiser than before. Friends, man must try to be wiser. When I look at the psychiatrist, I like him. Because most psychiatrists hate me. They would like to see me, see the end of me. Because I am dead against psychotic drugs. Because each one of them derived from either rocket fuel extract or from naphtha extract of nujol damage the human system. It's not only the psychiatric drugs, other drugs also. Because there is a beautiful study done by an American scientist a great scientist. He is actually a professor of genetics in the Washington State University. Douglas. He is called Douglas. D.C. Douglas. Douglas did a fantastic study. He created a chip called the MIT chip, mitochondrial chip, a computer chip, which tracks the drug when it goes into the human system. And it tells you where, what it does. And he took a lot of our Modern medicine, we call it as modern medicine. Why is it called modern medicine? I don't know. Anyway, we call it as modern medicine. And the other herbal drugs, mainly Tibetan, Chinese and Indian herbal drugs. And what came out in that study is something fascinating. The minute we give any drug, when I give any drug, it may be anything from aspirin to statin. It, the body says, this is something new, I have not seen it. You know, my ancestors have not seen it. Mankind has not seen it. So it must be a poison. That's the wisdom of the human body. So any poison which goes in, the body tries to throw into the chemistry, chemistry factory in the body called the liver. So it's thrown into the liver. Every drug, mind you, mark my words, every drug. Now what the liver does, it does its best to destroy it. Does its best to destroy it. Supposing the liver is not able to immediately destroy the whole lot, something comes out of the liver which we teach pharmacology students as first pass effect. I used to ask a lot of professors of pharmacology when I go around to medical <laughs> colleges to lecture, what did you teach about the first pass effect? Very simple. Sir, it is the amount of drug that comes out of the liver after the circulation in the liver. But what is it them about, what is the philosophy behind it? Would you believe not one person ever answered that question? The answer should have been, or the student must have told, try to prescribe as less drugs as possible, as less drugs as possible, because every single drug, when it becomes a chemical, is not recognized by the human system as its own. This is the beauty. I'll give you an example. There are 43 studies on garlic in the world literature. 43 studies on garlic. And the conclusion is, garlic is good for cooking, but not as a medicine. 
Now, there was an editorial in the British Medical Journal and the editor was a good friend of mine, so I told him, I phoned him and said, I'm going to write a letter to you. Richard, you have done one mistake. You have not seen what did they use in garlic studies. What they used was a garlic pill. Now, what is garlic pill vis-a-vis -vis garlic? Anything that we give, we want it to be either nice to the body to, for taste or, you know, some obnoxious things you don't want. So, West, there are a lot of people who abhor the very smell of garlic. So, to sell drugs, what did they do? They removed the smelling part of garlic, which is called the SH group, the sulfhydryl group. The same chemical that gives good smell for your fart. The same thing. So, they removed that. I'm sorry for using unparliamentary words, but you know, uh, you want to tell the truth, you have to really drive the point home. So, this garlic pill is garlic minus SH group inside a plastic capsule which goes into the gut and there it delivers it. It's supposed to deliver it. By and large, most of the time, the garlic is eaten by the, our friends in the, in the toilet, whom you see on the television. See, when that, uh, what is that thing called, you spray it, and that, they all come like that. And then suddenly you get that spray and then say, they all die. What's that spray called? I forget it. Harpic Excel. <laughs> you go, go back home and see, there are, there are billions and billions, trillions of germs in the, in the toilet. So they are very happy because they get good garlic to eat. What happens to you? Nothing happens to you. Now garlic to be effective in the human system, it must be eaten as garlic in nature. And that too, in raw form. And that too, put in the mouth, chewed kept there for a minute or two when it burns you because garlic is a medicine called alinine but it is in the form of alicine in the garlic and it mixes with the trypsin in the saliva to become alinine unless it that it's no effect now when we did that study garlic is a fantastic medicine fantastic medicine from killing germs viruses lowering your whatever you call you know you, people have an idea that cholesterol is bad etc etc if you think it is bad it will lower it if it is good for you it will increase it actually now we know that old elderly ladies you know old elderly in english means above 85 old elderly ladies who are still alive and healthy in the french nursing homes have on an average a cholesterol of 500 milligrams per cent to 900 milligrams per cent because in your body you have how many cells do you have in the body? School going kids? 53 trillion. Good. It's not bad. <laughs> anyway, 50 to 100 trillion cells. That is 10 to the power 14. And that, those cells die in billions every day because they have their time to die. They are told that is called apoptosis. Apoptosis in Greek means falling of a brown leaf. This word was coined by a botanist called Martin Raff, who was a professor of botany in the University College in London in the early part of the last century. And Martin gave the name apoptosis. That is a cell, when it's told, there's a, there's a gene called the suicidal gene. Gene tells the cell, like for example a red cell, 120 days is life, an RBC. At the end of the 120 days, it gets a message saying that, look Mr. RBC, your time is up. So the RBC responds, the cell is intact. Apoptosis is intact cell, becomes smaller, 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 smaller and becomes amorphic, loses its structure, form and at that time it becomes a speck of dust and we have a lot of scavengers and they are so efficient inside, they don't require even that machine to brew, they come eat it up, phagocytes, phagophage is appetite, they have got so much of appetite for cells, any cell that is dying they eat it up, so you are fine. But now what happens? You make the surrounding of the cell so bad that the cell instead of dying apoptosis dies by necrosis. Necrosis is cell wall breaks. And when this necrosis occurs, the cell content comes out which is very bad for the outside and the outside gets destroyed. And this is one of the reasons why you get cancer etc etc. So anyway, that's not our content. No, our content is this, that each cell when it comes in contact with this kind of a drug, rejects it. So the drug must be taken in its natural form. That is why the poet wrote, little do we see in nature that is ours. Little do we see in nature that is ours. Getting and spending, we seem to have lost our powers. What, what are we doing? Ask the chartered accountant, how many people want to cheat? 
I mean, uh, probably, you know, in a philosophic way, today if you cheat the government, I would be very happy because the government is squandering that money. You know, you give that money as tax, it's used for, it directly is into the Swiss banks. And probably India is the biggest depositor in the Swiss bank. So instead of that, you can do some good others. So we have a lot of these what are called philanthropes. The philanthropes are those who really want name for giving that thing. You know, I so and so has given. That kind of a thing. I'll tell you a story of two great people. Bill Gates, whom we all know. Oh, great man. He does a lot of philanthropy. He gives money, etc., etc. Put just one billion dollars for the Gates Foundation. That too because he had a disease for which he didn't get a good psychiatrist like him. He was taking antidepressants. He suddenly had a disease. This fellow likes the tandoori chicken very much. And he suddenly started hating tandoori chicken. Bill Gates could not eat tandoori chicken. And he almost hated tandoori chicken. So he hated food and started losing weight. And all the medical establishment in America which he created because he owns three-fourths of the drug companies and almost 100% of the vaccine companies. Now, all that couldn't help him. One day somebody told him, look, why don't you do, give something? You know, that's the essence of Indian philosophy. Tena, tyaktena, bunjitaha. Isha Upanishad says, I shouldn't be saying that in front of Tripati ji. Tripati, he has the three Vedas he has found. Huh? So, what does it say? Tena, tyaktena, bunjitaha. Rejoice in giving. So, he was told to give. So, what did he do? He thought for a long time. Kitna dena? Ek trillion, ek, ek, one, one, one billion, ek billion for Bill Gates. Why? And one billion is like for me, one rupee. So he gave one rupee. And he made a big fuss about it, doing charity. What charity? He gives you money, but it comes back to his company. So after some years, there was a study done on Bill Gates charity, which is published in the Lancet, a medical journal, which says what horrible man he is. If he gives one rupee, he gets back ten rupees for his company. This man, see there, there are people, there was another rich man who could buy Bill Gates, he didn't know that. His name is Warren Buffett. Buffett has, he is a chairman of 43 companies, but he doesn't have a single company meeting. When he selects a CEO for the company, he thinks for one month. When once he selects the CEO, the next he sees him or contacts him after one year with a letter. He says, dear so and so, see that you don't lose money for your shareholders. Two, if possible, improve that. Four, do your duty. Warren, that's all. He has not met any one of his CEOs. And he is the richest man. He was till very recently. Now Bill Gates has become richer. Howard Hughes is also like that. No, Bill Gates, so, so, so Warren Buffett one day calls Bill Gates for an appointment. His secretary says, no, he is so busy. Next six months you can't see him. He says, I just want two minutes. Just want to see his face. He says, no, 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 it's not possible. He's so busy. Then he says, can I walk, talk to him? She says, no, you can't talk to him. So the old man one day goes to his office. Straight away goes to his office and walks into the office. And he says, somebody, he didn't know who he was. And he said, I just want one minute of your time, he said. Okay. Bill Gates was upset, but he said, okay, sit down. He said, I don't want to even sit down. I've just got a check. You are supposed to be doing a lot of charity. I want to give something to your charity, but don't put my name. Bill Gates gave one billion. This fellow gave a check for 37 billion. Bill Gates was almost about to collapse. Then he sat up, stood up and made him sit down, talked to him for five hours. Then he told him, don't put my name, don't do anything. You just do some good things to society. That's the difference between a true philanthrope and a man who behaves like a philanthrope. So that is how society runs. Now come back to our drugs. What happens? When once you take any drug in its natural form, the body immediately says, ha this is mine, I know, my grandfather has eaten it. You know, it's like rice or it's like wheat. So it is immediately taken in. So the MIT study or the, the mitochondrial chip study showed that it is the body's intelligence and the energy that runs the system and not the drugs. And all that the modern drugs could do is ADR, adverse drug reactions. The biggest killer of mankind today is not a gun. It's not a plane falling down. 
you would be surprised in america alone whose population is little over the population of probably uh, nagpur <laughs> not nagpur <laughs> 300 million around less than 300 million four jumbo jets full of people die every week due to drugs if one jumbo jet falls down in this world there will be news for two months in all the television 24 hours 7 and every week four jumbo jets fall down and these people unnecessarily die by what is called iatrogenesis doctor induced illness through our biggest weapons of mass destruction about which I have written with the caption called weapons of mass destruction in the British Medical Journal the drugs chemical drugs so friends avoid as many chemical drugs as is possible I had a colleague of mine professor of psycho psychology some of you might maybe his name is KB Kumar professor Kumar who was at one time the president of the behavioral Science society he is now in Hyderabad this boy was so good I tell you I took him as the professor and within about two years the psychiatry department was empty no patient was going to the psychiatry department this fellow had to sit till about one o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the morning to finish his patient load so the psychiatrist started complaining about him writing memos about him he is very bad he is grabbing our patients i said nobody can grab a patient if a patient wants to go somewhere he goes how can you say so somehow or other they managed to keep him till i was there the day i retired they somehow or maneuver and see threw him out can you believe that the best doctor was thrown out anyway he got a better job and he is he is now the you know he is almost the king of whatever he surveys and still the same humble soul and that's why i like this psychiatrist psychiatrists have become real drug dispensing machines just because they have no patience the minute he says uh, you know i had no sleep last two night then he says did, did you are you feeling fine no doctor i you know i no enthusiasm right he'll start with an antidepressant and when will that end great this is the problem this is the problem so this is where a psychiatrist a professor of psychiatry in america she was young energetic and was like our friend she wrote a book called dementia a drug induced crime on mankind by doctors and she published this book her name is grace elizabeth jackson she was thrown out of the medical college she was in the naval medical college as the professor of psychiatry she was thrown out of the navy she was thrown out of the medical college thrown on the road but this book is getting her millions of dollars and she's she's invited all over the world to lecture and she her lecture fees is such that you know one lecture she can uh, 10 10 months uh, salary comes in one lecture so this girl is very happy but what i'm saying is this is the how the world is 1968 i wrote a small article called unconventional wisdom in medicine when did i write it 1968 and my department sat together and said this is a nut he must be thrown out so they proposed that i be dismissed but anyway that then dean probably was a nut himself so he didn't dismiss me so i survived by the skin of my teeth this happens this very much happens in this world so it is very difficult to fight for a truth i, I don't want to call the, the truth because khalil gibran said never say the truth it's a truth and it become different definitely later on because truth is not something which is stationary truth changes and a truth even if you fight for a truth it is difficult so i like prabod and his gang i can't be naming each one of you because it takes so much of time look at this boy young boy i like him he is very very good and very versatile too everyone everyone that girl oh my god she was very good the ophthalmologist and look at this girl she is very good each one is so good i tell you they are so nice and it has made my day coming here it's made my day i was telling uh, ankit that uh, you know all that should not have happened in a hotel room happened to me it happened but i was i was enjoying each one of that i was enjoying each one of that because i did some research when i went to this room there was no faucet in the toilet so to wash your bottom i thought this must be the highest because even in the in the in the, in the uh, american seven star hotels you don't have a faucet so you will search for it but at least they have a paper <laughs> you don't know about that an american came to madras and he was very fond of madras curries so he took his wife and went to one of the rr restaurants in chennai rr restaurants are andhra restaurants and there 
if uh, if x is the the spicy level of madras curry 3x is the spicy level of andhra curry so he ordered for chilli chicken <laughs> and he was tasting it he, his wife said my god i can't touch it honey it's so hot no no it's very good give it to me he had her share also so he finished the whole lot nothing happened he went and they slept and next morning he was in the toilet shouting at his wife honey now i know why the indians use water for ablution if they were if they were to use paper like us it would catch fire <laughs> anyway then i i didn't know what to do this hotel this hotel was so sophisticated they didn't have a mug they didn't have a bucket and all that they had was a little glass for drinking water so i tried to fill water in that and spill it it spills on the side <laughs> So I did a research. I ordered for a bottle of mineral water, full bottle of mineral water. Stored it in my uh, heating bowl, that you know, tea maker, and used this. And I tell you, it's so effective. So <laughs> it took them about 12 hours to fix up the faucet. Now it's fixed. Then the television was not running. If you wanted to see something, then I said the television doesn't run. I am from a village, so I don't know how to put it. So I called the man. He said, "Yeah, it's very easy. Amma aya, aya, kuch nahi ho." Then he said, "I'll send the IT man. Next, this morning the IT man come. It won't not working." Then ultimately somebody came just now when Ankit was there, and he started my television set. But I again thank God because I had complete rest. Otherwise, I would have been seeing something, you know, uh, unnecessary things in the television and wasting my time. So life is like that. Life is to be taken as it comes, and you must know who you are. This is the most important. Let me tell you, you must know who you are. what your abilities are and what you are and never look up look down i tell people to be happy you look down if you look up now if i look up say i have one shirt and if i look at prabod he has got so many shirts since since yesterday the third shirt i am seeing <laughs> i am in the same shirt so now if i want three shirts in 12 hours i must buy more shirts misery for me now instead when i go out i see that man on the road he has no shirt at all i am so happy i have a good shirt i have shirt other shirts at home i am so happy so you, to be happy look down and don't look up because there's a nice saying in our language gudda ke gudda adda if you look at one hill there is a bigger hill there is a bigger hill and there's a mountain and the mountain there is something else so never look up but look down you are always happy always happy because you are a lot as i said i i saw a, you know these things doing rounds in the internet one day he said if you have 1000 rupees in your pocket and 1 lakh rupees in your bank balance you are in the top 50 100 people in this world or something like that so th that makes you so happy otherwise you think you know who am i compared to this fellow mukesh ambani he is presenting his wife a 437 crores small plane for her birthday can you believe that and this has a bathroom a bedroom a sitting room a drawing room and all kinds of things and 127 crores 100 story house where you can't see when nelson rockefeller had depression in 1952 because he made so much money pulverized everybody in texas and made money from all other oil people then he had a house huge house huge car and then he was depressed depressed so much that he was not sleeping at all rolling in bed the whole night every no psychiatrist could help him because he didn't come to nagpur so nobody could help him so ultimately what happened was one day he didn't sleep a wink so he went to his lawyer the next day the lawyer told him why don't you do some charity that was in 1952 500 million dollars was big money and he gave it as charity as rockefeller foundation and rocky feller improved and improved and improved died at the age of 89 so it is in giving that you get and that is the philosophy in life you may say oh i am not rocky feller i am not ambani how can i give no can't you give one paisa from your one rupee you don't lose nothing okay you can't give that can't you give a smile because you may need a smile in the evening when you when you are tired so give a smile whenever you meet as uh, sapna said that in, you know when you walk the beauty of walking is not some people say i have money i'll have a what is that called treadmill like that there also he has got that uh, computer inside calculating how many crores are coming and going and he's running no use at all walking must be the walking's benefit is not just the leg moving 
it's the beauty of the thing you are being one with nature and you are a part of nature you came from nature going back to nature you are only a part of nature and that is the beauty of walking in the morning in addition to the physical exercise you get anyway that's what ayurveda usually says samikshakari work very hard that's the exercise if you work very very hard that exercise is enough to keep you going and you will feel very you know i'll tell you an experiment you do a day when you are very tired go for a walk come back you are so rejuvenated you have forgotten your tiredness however tired you are go for a walk maybe in the evening maybe in the afternoon maybe any time and there is no time as long as the weather is okay you go for a walk and lot of our ladies worry about sun our best friend in the world the man who keeps us alive if the sun takes a strike one week strike we will be all dead why we even the plants will be dead so it's the sun's electromagnetic energy that keeps you and me going and sun is the best friend but the industry has produced a myth with television interest saying that you will get skin cancer you will become black your color will go and things like that so you have so many things sunscreen one of the important causes of skin cancer then all kinds of chemicals on the face you know you make up you must see these people american people who look so nice on the television you see them in the house once you will think it's some ghost of that person so bad they look because the skin completely peels off you go to kerala and see those women at night glowing face because they put coconut oil and they they take bath never wash the coconut oil have you seen a kerala lady in kerala at the back she has got a half moon in her brows that is her uh, hair standing there with lot of coconut oil making an impression it show me one kerala girl who has got a skin disease because biggest germ killer in this world is coconut oil biggest germ killer that's why in pickles you put coconut oil you could don't grow fungus in that and you look at a tamilian girl no feet you must see their feet so clean because they don't get out of the house without turmeric paste on the feet and many of them of course the olden style these days of course people are westernized they put the turmeric paste on their face they all look jaundiced if you look at them they all look yellowish these are all healthy things that we don't do and the truth is always suppressed for business coconut oil 1964 i wrote an article coconut oil is as good as mother's milk and the best fat because coconut oil and mother's milk are the only two things that contain sodium monolauric acid which is the base of human immune system i even wrote there suspecting doctors who have not studied their biochemistry properly will have a child to go and see the infant food which is only coconut oil can be used for infant food if you use any other oil the infant will die because only two things that get digested in the mouth because infant doesn't have the pancreatic juice pancreatic lipase so the fat can be digested only by the salivary lipase and only two things even today you put coconut oil in my mouth it gets digested there you don't have to sub, sub, you swallow it it just gets digested and directly goes as ketones and that is why in america today coconut oil is a treatment for alzheimer's disease with very good results coconut oil now is the treatment for heart diseases from harvard and harvard has now admitted that because we demonized coconut oil millions of people have died all over the world so truth it's very difficult very difficult i tell you i have suffered so much that in 1984 i gave a talk on coconut oil for the heart in american college of cardiology meet where there were 25000 cardiologists meet in three cities only because such large conference halls are not there anywhere and after the talk they questioned me for a long time some or other i survived then i was coming out there the old cardiologist he is no more now may his soul rest in peace elliot cordae is his name he called me and said young man do you have any other work in boston i said no sir see it's now 4 o'clock it will be dark by about 6 o'clock and the whole soya lobby is so powerful here they may bump you off you better go <laughs> this is this is our this is called truth this is the truth you must see the abusive letters i get i wrote a book called what doctors don't get to study in medical school it came out there's a big journal in india called the national medical journal which comes from all india institute and they think they all india institute they're all gods because they have political clout you know he starts the all india institute as a mbbs student and end, dies in ncd as this retired director or somebody till then they're all in all india institute so he wrote two page review the author is a fool he doesn't know science he is a bloody fool and he must be hospitalized and the book is so bad the english is horrible and this and that and all kinds of rubbish he wrote would you believe copies were sold in one week 
So I wrote him a nice letter. Thank you very much for getting all my books sold. Now this book was published in London by a company, English company, on their own. And the British Medical Journal wrote a review which said, this is not a textbook of medicine as claimed by the author, but is a holy text of medicine written by a prophet. Then, all over the world it sold. It is so difficult to tell the truth. So difficult to tell the truth. Because people don't want to accept truth because it is not for business. But I always tell people, see one day I was, I was called to give an oration in a Santo auditorium for 2500 people, this is about 20 years ago, on one of those saints, Paramacharya in Kanchi. He was, he was alive at 106, Chandrasekhar Bharati. When he died, there's a trust which made it and they wanted me to give an oration. And the topic they gave, the topic was quantum physics and Advaita philosophy. So I gave a speech one hour. I was questioned for two hours. Madras audience is very, very intellectual. They all come, they are ready, prepared. And they gave a standing ovation. I went home. I was a vice chancellor in Manipal. I get a letter. Dear Professor B. M. Hegde, you are an idiot. First sentence, full stop. Shankara is a bigger idiot. Second sentence. Between the two of you, don't try to confuse the world. <laughs> Next time you come to Chennai and talk about Shankara's philosophy, we will throw rotten eggs on your face. Sign, so and so. I enjoyed the letter. You know, I, I have so nice letter. So I wrote him, dear Sri, so and so, thank you very much for your loving letter and the sentiments expressed therein. You may think I am an idiot. It doesn't matter because I know what I am. So you think I am an idiot, it doesn't matter to me. But don't think Shankara is an idiot because you can't assess him. He's too big for you. Leave him alone next time when you're angry. Only blame me. And the, do you know what happened? This man's ego got punctured. He came all the way down to Manipal, touched my feet and said, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't understand. He was the secretary of the Madhva Pita in Madras. And they hate each other so much. Then I told him, look, you call yourself a religion and you're in the same religion. You hate each other like the Sunnis and the Shias and, the, you know, Protestants and the Catholics. Time was when, when I was a student in England, there's two roads, Victoria Road and Falls Road. There are two roads in Belfast like this. If a child from Victoria Road by mistake goes to Falls Road, it will never come back alive. Because Falls Road is purely Catholic and the Victoria Road is purely Protestant. This is the thing that I said, there were three Acharyas. They thought about the same thing and looked at it from three different angles. That's all. And they're all great people and you and I, ordinary mortals can't even think what they are. So why do you blame them? This man is my best friend now. And his wife makes such fantastic sambar, I tell you. Vengai sambar. That each time I go to Chennai, I get a free meal there. <laughs> so, even if people are angry with you, you give them love. This is my formula. Return anger with love. You win over the man. Win over the woman or whoever it is. Because love is the best tonic that I've ever found in life. But occasionally between husband and wife, even if you love her, you have to occasionally tell her you love her. Because you know, otherwise she will forget that you love her. <laughs> so it's not a bad idea to express people that you love them. You know, I, I make it a habit. Bad habit though, I'll tell you because I, I don't keep any secrets. Every night before I sleep, I ring up my three children. Because my wife, God thought, she, he can look after her better, so he's taken her away. Because he thought, no, this ass is going around like a Haridasa all over the place and not looking after his wife. So he took her away one fine morning. She had no illness at all. May her soul rest in peace. But my children, they're all grown up. Children have children. <laughs> and, uh, so, but they still, unless I call them wherever I am and say, honey, I love you, I don't get sleep. And now, my children have given me what's called an iPad. I don't know. I am a villager. I don't know anything about it. But that's you press a button. If you have some Wi-Fi or something like that, I can see their face. So my grandchildren would like to see me every day. I feel so happy. For two days, I was in some place where the Wi-Fi was not working. But this hotel is very good for Wi-Fi. <laughs> I'm not joking. The minute I got into the place and when the faucet was not there, I was thinking that I pressed the button, my, I saw my granddaughter. She says, Aja, it's good that you called me. I'm going for my friend's wedding. So it's good that you called me. So I said, honey, I love you. And, you know, I miss you. And then that's it. You, you get good sleep, very good tonic. So be yourself. And go back to your roots. Accept what you are. Because if I'm a monkey, if I know I'm a monkey and I accept I'm a monkey, I have no stress at all. But most of us, if we are monkeys... <laughs> look at this girl. <laughs> 
But most of us, we know we are monkeys, but we want to show to the world we are tigers. Now here is a stress. Because every second you have to act like a tiger, act like a tiger. Because if something slips, your monkeyness may be seen by society. <laughs> so the biggest stress is, you don't know who you are. Try to know who you are. And then, you know, life becomes so easy. Don't keep any secrets inside. Open book. Anybody can write on that book. Open book. And you are so compassionate, so happy. Compassion is the real meaning. See, we have changed the definition of health now. We, in the sense, we have a group of scientists, we call ourselves the World Academy of Authentic Healing Sciences. We are 15 years old. And I, except me, I am a villager. The 14 of them are who is who in the world of science. Four of them are Nobel laureates and they are very influential people. And we have had a decision to say we must change the definition of health as absence of mental, physical, psychological, spiritual, etc., etc., death. And this is the definition of Alma Alta is a business thing. Because I tell you what, absence of disease. Now for that we have created a business called Chakap. Chakap. You are fine, no? You are fine, but you go to a checkup, you come out as a patient. <laughs> I'll tell you why, it is very simple. No, you do not, don't laugh, I'm serious about it, very serious. Because today, you have a TBS, total body scanner, which scans 500 parameters of your body. Okay, now a little sad statistics, even a child knows, that what are we doing in medicine for the human body? We say, your normal blood pressure, what is normal? What is your normal blood pressure is not what normal normal blood pressure. Mahatma Gandhi's blood pressure is 210 by 120 all the time. And Sushila Nair was not getting sleep. Mahatma Gandhi was getting good sleep. <laughs> and the old man died of a complication of hypertension, brain dead, heart disease and this and that. Unfortunately, God say helped him not to suffer from any one of that. So we must thank God say for that. See what is happening here is, I have a friend of mine who's, who started Nimhans as the first founder director. R.V. Verma. R.N. Verma is now 89, you know, 91. This man has been seeing me for the last 45 years saying that his blood pressure is 90 by 40. I told him, why are you worried? Brian Boggs' blood pressure is 60 by 40. And he is the strongest man in the world. So what is the problem? He said, See, when the doctors always tell you something to boost the blood pressure, I said, Unnu akanda. He put 92 years, he says, ah, this man kept me alive for 45 years. I said, I didn't keep alive, that man. So you will never die, you can't die. So your blood pressure is what is your blood pressure. So what is the textbook's blood pressure? It's called the average, statistical average. You check, our friend knows, all chartered accounts understand, actuaries understand that. You take 1000 people, check their blood pressure and no blood pressure can be checked correctly by a human being because the very physics of blood pressure is wrong. I won't go into that because it will confuse you. Come back to this. Now what has happened is, you check 1000, plot it on a XY graph. If Correct me if I'm mistaken. Then you have a Gaussian curve called the bell-shaped curve, right? Yes. Then you say mean, mean, plus two standard deviation. Now that comes to whatever. Now I'll give you an example. What is the normal height of an Indian male? Gaussian curve, 5.4, 2 plus this side, that side. 5.2 plus 5.6, you're normal. Okay? Right? Amitabh Bachchan comes for a checkup. 6.2, our treatment is cut his legs to make him 5.6. Are, what do we do? Sugar, what Blood pressure, what do we do? That's what we do. Then next day, Jaya Bachchan comes for a checkup. She is 4.6, transplant that leg to her. <laughs> day in and day out, we doctors are doing this. Trying to correct the statistical average, which we tell the common man as normal. So, average becomes a normal, there will be what are called false positives. For every parameter, the false positive is 5%. Right, sir? Yes. Now, calculate, I am telling you. When you check 500 parameters, what is the false positive? 2,500. So 100 people go for a checkup, 2,500 patients come out. Isn't that a good business? So there was this professor of medicine in America, her name is Leon Eisenberg, and this girl was 52 years old and she was a very brilliant professor and she was worried about what she was teaching. One day she asked the brightest class boy who passed out came to her. She said, who is a patient? She asked. She was expecting a very esoteric answer. The boy very simply said, a man or a woman who sees a doctor becomes a patient. 
she had a shock of her life. She said, then when does he become a man or a woman again? The student thought for a while and said, rarely ever, madam, if ever. Full stop. <laughs> this girl resigned her job as professor of medicine at the age of 52 because she said everything is wrong about medicine. And she sat the MCAT test. MCAT is CET, GET, whatever he has, and got a good grade, joined the medical school. That medical school, a student again, went through four years and came out and said, everything that we teach is wrong. Did you get it? You haven't got it because it's not publicized. That article is suppressed. This is very interesting. The first article which studied diet and heart started in 1954, ended in 1959, spent 110 million dollars of the taxpayers' money in America and the study said diet has nothing to do with heart disease. But by 1959, the myth of fat has gone so much that we have started getting fat lowering drugs, cholesteramine. Have you seen that drug? You have to take eight tablespoons of that in the morning. It is like sand. And most patients used to vomit it. And that was the beginning of the cholesterol too. The statin today. 25 rupees a tablet you give, take it, it kills you. 10% of people who start statin, their blood sugar starts going up. 10% of statin use has become diabetic. So 11 million people take statins in India and 1.1 1 mil, 1 .1 million diabetics are added every year. Then we proclaim on the other hand by the diabetic drug people, he said India is the capital of diabetes of the world. False. The truth is India is the best country to have diabetes because Americans are following Indian rice diet for diabetes. South Indian rice diet. It is in the morning brown rice in the afternoon and brown rice in the evening and a little fruits here and there six times a day 8.30, 10.30, 12.30, 3.30, 6.30, 9.30 small, 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 small feeds and don't ever see wheat because wheat contains gluten gluten goes directly to the pancreas and maintains your diabetes if you're a diabetic wheat maintains your diabetes good to know because we want diabetes to be maintained this is called this is mongering if everybody is uh, not mad, how, what will this doctor do? He'll have to close his shop. <laughs> See, this is, this, is, this is called taking medicine to the marketplace. What did Hippocrates say? Cure rarely, comma, comfort mostly, semicolon, console always. And what is consoling? What is consoling? Psychotherapy. So, Today, you people are not MDs and PhDs. You are the topmost doctors in the world. Because you are doing exactly what Socrates said. Not Socrates, our friend, our father, Hippocrates said. But we are all hypocrites. He was Hippocrates. And we took an oath in his name and immediately became hypocrites. Today, medicine is the biggest industry in the world. Cholesterol lowering alone is $1.72 trillion business. One company which sells cholesterol drugs gets an on an average 15 to 18 billion dollars profit. A cardiac stent, which is like your spring of the ballpoint pen, costs 10 dollars to manufacture. Sold for 2000 dollars. And the budget is 500 dollars doctor's hospitality. And a company gets a small profit of 1490 dollars per stent. And of course, you don't get it for 2000. The hospital will have add to so many things then. Salt, then you know, seasoning, etc., etc. It becomes about 3-4 lakhs. Now what does it do at the end of the day? Nothing. Because the blocks you see are not disease at all. The disease that kills you is not seen in the angiogram. It's called vulnerable plaque, which can't be seen. These blocks are very good because every, even a child has a block. They did angiogram for young children in the American army, aged between 18 and 22, who died in the Vietnam War and the Korean War. There are four vessel blocks, three vessel blocks. They were very healthy because God has given enough. That's called remodeling the heart. It's preconditioning it. These people with the block get a heart attack, they won't die. But if one gets a heart attack without a block, he will drop down dead. So, but we frighten that. We tell them, do you know the sentence we use? You are sitting on a volcano. It might burst any minute. So the fellow says, uh, can he go home and come back? He has talked to his wife. I don't know. On your way back home also you may die. So you better do it now. Do you know why? If the bakra goes out and talks to somebody, he may not come back. Now chartered accountant will tell you a, a cost of a cardiac catheter lab and surgery will be about 30 to 40 crores today. 
they don't put their money they put some black money as uh, this thing and then borrow it from the bank there are obliging bankers who give you money now having got the money now calculate the interest calculate the other thing so you require minimum four bakras a day to run the show that is why mark tain wrote i quote for a man with a hammer in the hand and wanting to use it everything here looks like a nail needing hammering absolutely true that is why we have become a menace to society it has to change it can't change otherwise it has to change from within and that change can come only if we can give, bring in a generation future generation which is not as greedy as we are is a human greed that kills another human being and if you don't have greed and if you don't have as somebody rightly said i think sapan said you have to ego your ego you have to sell it is it that's why the first thing i sold was before i sold anything else my ego in the market so people say oh we must come to take you i said why do you come to take me do i get any special thing and they say we'll get the car i said look you bring a car from 100 miles to pick me up then you take me to your place then you have to drop me back that means four trips a day sir that is our own car car is yours but where is the oil from you have to pay for it no now what do i get if you come or if you don't come i will take a taxi from here my taxi company fellow is there i'll come to your place pay his taxi fare and then i'll come back so it saves at least two trips they don't understand people don't like it sir chief guest we have to bring him and all i said why driver brings me better than you you know i know him because i've been using that car for donkey's years and he is very safe i can even sleep in that car you don't bring a big car with a driver who is not known i can't every minute i have to be awake people don't understand that because people want to be big you know i people call me you know uh, our naughty girl poonam was calling me a vip i said i am not a vip i am a vvip very very insignificant person <laughs> but if you look at yourself look at yourself you are a colony of 100 trillion human beings they are called human cells and they are all you and each cell has been living on its own it has got its mind it can eat it can sleep it can excrete it can do everything but for economic reasons after these chartered accountants came they said no why everybody do everything we'll come together so about 100 trillion of them joined together and made a colony called the human body and you think your human body is solid you nothing solid about you you are like the television screen you know i'm talking here it's like amitabh bachchan talking on the television or hema malini dancing you put the television on hema malini starts dancing you put it off hema malini is dead but you go to the dining room and put it on hema malini is born there that's what exactly happens to the human cell this was found out by a cell biologist called bruce lipton bruce lipton there's a beautiful book you must read called biology of belief this is a fascinating book this man was an atheist he never believed in god and he was a professor of anatomy in the wisconsin medical school and he was a cell biologist and he was studying not the dead cells like most anatomy study which he calls as a tombstone of a cell he was studying a live cell and he was studying this live cell and then he saw the cell is live moves about does everything it excretes it thinks it can you just put a drop of poison at one end of the petri dish the cell runs away from the poison you put a drop of some good food there the cell runs into the food and eats it then he saw on the day you are made you are the one cell you are called zygote your weight is 0.1201 gram but that one cell when suddenly gets a connection there is what's called the integral membrane protein with an antenna like your television antenna it gets a connection from universal consciousness and the cell becomes live and it just starts doing everything this man was looking at it my god he said i thought science runs this world but look at it something beyond science runs this world and he became a believer and he wrote this book and now goes around preaching like our friend Uh, sapna who left her ophthalmology and went round preaching bruce now goes round preaching like a preacher people to have belief in god because it's god who runs the world that's what's called the biology of belief somebody was talking about emotions the two people our chartered accountant or psychiatrist emotions have been proved to be chemicals there is this girl called candace pert a brilliant phd student who came to the palace 
America's NIH is called the palace, where all kings sit. Like, you know, here, ICMR is a palace. And like that, no, they're all big people. They, sir, I call them Sarkari scientists. And there are Sarkari intellectuals here who give opinion on everything under the sun, from sun to the moon. Everything they give. So the Sarkari scientist, the head of us, what's called Saul Snyder. Snyder is a big name, a Lusker Award winner and a big name. So this girl started her postdoc with Snyder, who had some money for finding out opiate receptors, which are known to be only in the brain, because we thought the brain, mind, mind is only in the brain at that time. So he told her, find out if the opiate receptors are elsewhere. This girl took to it like fish taking to water. She worked very hard, day and night, day and night, day and night. But by the time the money was spent, there was nothing left. And still she has not got the receptor. So Saul called her, don't, I don't want to waste my money on you. This receptor is over, you go and do, do something. I don't want you as a postdoc. But this girl said, I'm going to find it one day. Something inside her saying, I'm going to find it one day. So she told him, I don't want money, sir, but I'll continue in this lab. He said for a change, okay, continue in the lab. Six months later, she found out an opiate receptor in the muscle. Opiate receptor in the blood vessel. And she was so excited. And she had worked so hard, she deserved a holiday. She locked her laboratory and went away for a long holiday. Then something sensed in this fellow, something is amiss. So he called the laboratory technicians and said, what was this girl doing at night? They said, sir, she was working on the same thing and she has found something. Is it? Then lock was removed at night. And he got the ledger and got all her data. And before she came back from the holiday, he published the data in a paper. And he was so influential that he went to Swiss Academy and said, this is the thing I have found. And they said, okay, you will get the Nobel Prize. So Nobel Prize was declared in his name, but it was not given because the date had not come. When this girl, Candace, came back, she was so fuming because he said, this fellow who destroyed my career now wants to steal my data. Very bold girl. So she went directly to Geneva and Zurich and then talked to all the members and said, this is my work, this is my original data, this fellow's photo started it, this is not his journal. And of course, Saul did not get his Nobel Prize. Candace lost her job, Candace lost her uh, standing in community, thrown out. Candace wrote a book, Molecules of Emotion. Beautiful book, Molecules of Emotion. Please get that book and read it. Candace Pert, C-A-N-D-A-C-P-E-R-T is her name, and read that book. And there's a beautiful sentence, I'll tell you. Time will come when you get a headache, you don't look for a pill, instead sit in one place and elevate your consciousness to the level where your own brain produces enough opioids to kill your pain. Full stop. What a beautiful thing. And that is the future of medicine, my dear friends. But we have to take it out, de-link it from money. Unless you de-link medicine from money, this medicine will kill mankind. I don't know how many of you have read this beautiful article. If you have not, read it in the Google free. It's called Death by Medicine. There are five authors. The first author's name is Gary Null. G-A-R-Y-N-U-L-L. Please read that. You will get a shock of your life that we are the leaders of death in the world. Followed by cancer low down and heart attack much lower down. On the top of the list, in a country where we think there are so much chucks and balances, if it could happen, you horrify, you take the audit in India, my God, you will be shocked. That is why we went to the IOM, convinced them that the future of health definition should not have absence of disease because there is nobody who has no disease. If I now scan all of you with the TBS, all of us will have not one cancer, 10 to 15 cancers. But they don't become cancers, they all die. When do they die? When you have a good mind and when you want to help someone, cancer cannot grow in you. But when you eat a lot, like a pig, and hate everyone, cancers grow like a tree. And that's what happens. And it's in the mind. Everything is in the mind. And where is the mind? Never mind. <laughs> and the mind is everywhere. It's in my hand. And who is the mind? For every nine cells of germs in my body, I have one cell of mine. In your body, for every single cell of yours, you have nine germ cells. In your own genome, we are saying we are human genome, we know everything, we do genetic engineering, we will do uh, stem cell. We don't even know one by one a millionth of a genome because genome contains 23,000 human genes. 
and two and a half trillion germ genes. Germinomes, metabolomes, virinomes, all of them put together, the metagenome is all germs and I have written an article, you read that, a simple article called Germs are us. Toys are us you have seen, you know. So I wrote germs are us. We are germs. So when I say, did your father have diabetes? Yes sir. Oh. Then you become a diabetic. With fear itself, the sugar will go up. Your father's diabetes has nothing to do with you. Because your father knew the relationship is one in a million zeros one. But you may be a diabetic if the germs is a diabetic. So you are a germs child. And these germs are our friends. We have come one full circle from pasture. Louis Pasteur said, germs kill. And then they say, germ theory was born. And that's why mankind is alive. It was a great day for medicine. And antibiotics were an. Today it's a very sad day for medicine because there are 500 antibiotic molecules. They cannot even touch some of the germs which have grown in the hospital called superbugs. And then do you know how we kill it? When Murarji Desai used to drink his own urine, we used to laugh at him. Did you laugh? You also must have laughed. Because most of us are RNIs. You know RNI? Resident non-Indians. <laughs> most of us live here, think with American mind. Now, America, do you know what they are doing? Because patients are dying like flies in the intensive care unit with the nosocomial infections. One professor, Chu, in Johns Hopkins Hospital, she went into veterinary science. In the veterinary science for hundreds of years, infections were treated not by the present vets who use antibiotics. In the olden days, vets, cow's infection was used by cow dung. This girl did a bold thing. The patient was dying of a simple Clostridium difficile infection. And otherwise the patient was very healthy. So she gave the shit of her patient's own mother, 250 shit, emulsified, put it in a tube and put it in the mouth. By evening the patient became all right. Now for severe infection, the treatment is, in American German, fecal transplant. Fecal transplant. Muraji Desai was drinking urine. Today it's fecal transplant. Now America says, human urine has so much of calicrinins and so much of immune boosters that it could be treatment. And cow's urine is now patented for treatment as an immune booster. One day I was with the central minister. This fellow was, used to be my patient. So he one day told me, Professor Igde, shall I tell you a secret? I said, go ahead. You can tell it to the world, I don't care, he said. I said, okay. He was admitted with what is called ulcerative colitis. You must have heard about it. And which, mean, which means we don't know anything about it. It's called idiopathic disease. We are very happy about this disease. Idiopathic means I am an idiot. But that idiopathic is in Latin and I am an idiot in simple English. I am an idiot, I don't know. And he was having 20 loose motions of blood every day and lost about 20 kilograms. And he was admitted in intensive care unit in the, uh, the All India Institute. One day Murarji Desai, his Prime Minister, came to see him. He told him, you bloody fool, on the first day itself I told you to drink your urine, you forgot. Now anyway you are dying, drink your urine, he said. And he says the next morning he drank because he wanted to survive. One day drinking, 20 became 18. Two days drinking, cut short, 10 days drinking, he went home. And he is alive now because somebody has now removed a part of his brain, intentional to make him a vegetable, but he is still alive. He is about 76, 77, 78. I have another chief minister friend of mine. One day he told me, Professor Igde, do you know your friend? So and so, yes. He was our party chief. And I had an eczema. My father was a doctor. I am an engineer. But this eczema will not go. I was looking so ugly, I couldn't face the world. One day, your friend, that minister, told me, hey, drink your urine. I tell you, I faithfully do that even today. I have no disease at all. I am so fine. And both these ministers are saying, we'll give you money, you do a research. But I have done my research already because I have a lot of volunteers, don't worry. And we have shown how important it is. I had a patient recently who had a heart attack and he came to me. He survived some or other. Not because of me, they all survived because of themselves. Now this man had ulcerative colitis. So his gastroenterologist gave him sulfapyrazine. And next day he had Stevens Johnson syndrome. He was almost dying, kidney failure, whole body was bloated with skin and heart failure came and he became really bad. So his wife was crying. Doctor, heart attack, you saved him, but with this simple diarrhea, he is dying. So I told her, look, if he is dying, definitely ask him to drink his urine. He became all right in a week's time. The whole thing stopped. So we have, little do we see nature that is ours. 
because the world is too much with us money is too much with us this is what our friend wordsworth william wordsworth wrote after the industrial revolution the world is too much with us late and soon getting and spending we really seem to lost our powers little do we see in nature that is ours we have sold our soul a sordid boon friends don't sell your soul to the devil who is the soul now we know where the soul is here is this quantum physicist with an astrophysicist his name is robert lanza and lanza has found that the soul leaving the body how many of you have read that beautiful book called h w wells written a book called holes in the wall if you have not read read it h w wells the fascinating book called holes in the wall or a book called bridge on san luis rey bridge on san luis rey it's a 1927 penguin classic written by a man called thornton wilde an american writer and in which he says how there are two worlds the world of the living and the world of the dead connected by a bridge of human love now multiverse is a theory of lanza multi universes and our sanatana dharma especially the upanishads talk about multiple universes and so beautifully and what the upanishads talk is quantum physics asino vrajati duram shayano jati sarvatah is what an electron is nobody has described the electron as well as upanishads that is why i tell people see ultimately indian philosophy is the greatest philosophy indian philosophy doesn't mean hindu philosophy there is nothing called a hindu religion it's sanatana dharma ageless religion and all people can a muslim can have sanatana dharma as christian can have sanatana dharma because sanatana dharma does not belong to any god because the vedas don't proclaim god at all if you see om bhur bhu haswaha surya e namaha surya is a shakti om bhur bhu haswaha agni e namaha om bhur bhu haswaha why e namaha what is why why is the lightning why do i do that prajapate nama ultimately i am doing it because i can't see that shakti called god so i am propitiating what he has created what is wrong in it that's the beauty of it and that is what is important at the end of the day and whether is your doctor or anybody you have the old indian sanatana dharma which says do you know what it says it's all condensed in the mahabharata the mahabharata is an epic india's epic which is unrivaled by anything what is see homer this that nothing and in mahabharata rajagopalachit writes a beautiful commentary on the mahabharata rajagopal writes i wrote what is not in it is nowhere see what is not in it is nowhere one sentence that's all that means mahabharata has everything it is passion it is jealousy it is hatred it's you know after all what is mahabharata what is what is see what is Iliad? all for a woman you fight a war but look at the indian culture that girl runs away with the enemy in iliad homers but here sita comes back to her husband parvati comes back to her husband that's the difference so somebody said a friend of mine used to say doctor why read whole of mahabharata just read two sentences two words what are they dharma kshetre kuru kshetre now cut it dharma plus kshetra kuru plus kshetra rewrite it kshetre kshetre dharmam kuru in every walk of life do your dharma dharma is not religion dharma is your obligation to society and if you did that you will all be healthy <laughs> poonam said it's time up <laughs> okay katam she says do you know uh, you know uh, when thomas jefferson became the president of united states of america he was known for long winded speeches his uncle called him and thomas thomas you become the president now take note stand up speak up and shut up <laughs> so i stood up i thought i spoke up and now i shall shut up because one of the people who talked here i don't know who said while sound is good silence is golden it's in silence is you know when you say om oh it is a silence which probably reaches the other end and you really get happiness at that stage so i don't think i should go on and on and i know what you will all say when you go home why did pramod call this idiot you know because you know there was a parish priest a friend of mine who was going from place to place lecturing one day he was to lecture in nagpur and he was staying in a hotel not this hotel because there's no faucet <laughs> that that being a sunday and there was no television etc he wrote a nice letter to his wife because he had left home and going around the world 
and he wanted to post it. He came out, being a Sunday, he didn't know where the post office is. So there were urchins playing. He told them he, they didn't understand their uh, language. So he said, can you take me to the post office? They said, come along. It's a holiday for us. We'll take you to the post office. They took him to the post office. He posted the letter. He was coming back. Then being a priest, he said, my God, these children have done something for me. I'm a spiritual human being, so I must do something in return. So he said, I'll buy some chocolates for them. Went to the shop and said, come on, give chocolates. The man gave chocolates. He put his hand in. The valet was in the Ashok Hotel. <laughs> so he said, my God, what can I do? So he told the children, sorry children, I forgot my valet. But in this evening's lecture, it's, it was arranged by Prabodh Charitable Trust, but it's not charity. This lecture of mine is money. You have to pay 100 rupees per lecture. Yes. I will give a note to Prabodh or Poonam. You take it and they will let you in free. So for showing me the post office, you have two free tickets. Children laughed. He said, why? Sir, there are a lot of uh, fellows like B. M. Day speaking, but listening is very difficult, sir. Who wants to listen? <laughs> we have better things to do in the evening on a Sunday. But he said, no, no, I am talking on a very important thing because I am a priest, I am talking about spirituality, I am talking about God, I am talking about way to heaven. And he became emotional. Children burst out laughing. He said, why? Sir, a man who doesn't know the way to the post office, how could there no way to heaven? <laughs> So, my dear friends, spirituality is nothing very esoteric. <coughs> we are all spirits. Not spirits, but spirit. Spirits is what is available in the shop. Spirit comes from the word spirus in Latin, which is breath. So, our ancestors, cave dwellers, knew one thing. An animal which they killed for eating did not breathe. A live animal breathed. So, they hypothesized, just as we do in hypothesis. Breath is a god who enters you and leaves you when you die. Which of course is not true, but then that is how the word spirituality was developed from that. Spirituality is nothing to do with religion. Absolutely nothing to do with religion. Spirituality simply is dealing with the spirit. That's a human being. And how do you deal with the human being? Because why do you deal with another human being? Because he is a part of you. Today, the greatest quantum physicist Max Planck says, consciousness is fundamental. Everything else is derived from that. So you are derived from the consciousness, I am derived from the consciousness, from the same consciousness. Supposing I want to hurt, hurt our chartered accountant, it hurts a part of my body. So I want to destroy him, my body gets destroyed by my own cells. That's called autoimmune disease. Me, you concept. Leave that me business, I business. Make it we business. And the day you leave the I and you become a we, you are fine. A shisha went to a guru. He said, Sir, I have come here. I want peace. I want peace. He was fighting. And the Guru said, say that again. I want peace. He said, okay, say that without the I. Want peace. Want peace. Now, without the pe want, peace. See, there is peace. What is preventing peace? Want and then I. So, let us leave I and want and live in this world as we. Thank you very much. Trust. Friends, I'm sure you all have gathered here this Sunday afternoon because of an inner urge to experience wisdom that is going to be showered by our exceptional speakers today. Exceptional because unke jaisa koi hai hi nahi. We all are here directly or indirectly because we know one person here who is a pillar of change for human minds. Hum unke baare mein jitna bolna chahenge, utna kam hi hoga. And he is none other than Dr. Prabodh. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together once again for Dr. Prabodh. Sir, if you can have, yes. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce Dr. Prabodh. His academic qualifications include MSc in Statistics, MBA in Marketing, LLB, MS in Psychotherapy and Counseling, PhD in Psychotherapy and Counseling, DSC in Psychotherapy and Counseling. The courses attended uh, by Sir are Hypnotherapy, Past Life Regression Therapy, Art of Living, Siddha Healing, Pratiprasav Sadhana, Transcendental Meditation. He is practicing psychotherapist and counseling consultant counselor to RBI and advisor and consultant to social and academic institutions. Positions currently held by Sir are founder president and life member of Association of Counselors and Psychotherapists Nagpur, 
Director at Institute of Psycho Management Studies, Managing Trustee of Prabodh Education Trust. And more than anything else, a friend, philosopher, and guide to all those who associate with him. One thing I have personally learned from Sir, and I would like to put in a few words. Requesting Dr. Prabodh to come on stage and share a few words with us. My very close friend who became my friend less than 24 hours now, Padma Bhushan, Dr. B.M. Hegde. Because it seems uh, friendship doesn't need amount of years and time to spend together, it happens instantly, which has which I have been experiencing since yesterday evening. The guests of honor, Mr. Prakash Khemka, Mr. Sudhir Baheti, Mr. Aditya Tripathi, today's expert panel who have contributed their experience and wisdom in the earlier session, advisors for the Prabodh Educational Trust, organizing committee, and uh, a very generic word, all my dear friends, I am so happy to be here. It is so overwhelming to talk to you on this annual day functions. Because I have so much to say. And it always seems that there is so less time given to me. Because of the paucity of time, perhaps I will have to restrict myself for 10 minutes. But I must speak my mind on this occasion. So let me really put the words to my feelings. Friends, I really feel nice, uh, so comfortable to be with you. Uh, you being the part of uh, trust family, Prabodh Educational Trust family. And on this occasion, always I look back and then plan to look ahead. Looking back, uh, I remember when I took up something in the educational world after giving up the public sector job, that time my observation was, uh, I need to do something in education because, because I thought education is corrupting, ruining, disturbing, alienating, rest, uh, hindering the process of growth and evolution. I might sound absurd. I might sound obnoxious. But this is what was my feeling about the educational system which is prevalent right now. And even today I see a lot of souls to be saved from the present education system. So my strategy to overcome or contribute uh, in the educational field was to collect the people. Collect those people who are different and collect those people who want to make difference. And friends, I am so proud to say that I have not one, many of them whom I have collected over those 13 years of time. And after having collected those people, the second strategical aspect of it was to connect them. And this annual day celebration is precisely to see that how closely we are connected. And if I thought I could collect and connect those people who have difference and ability to make difference. Perhaps then I can think of correcting the system. And today to bless us on this occasion of giving insights to correct the system, we have none other than Padma Bhushan Dr. B.M. Hegde. It is such a blessing to have so great souls to be with us. And friends, I share you one thing which is my personal experience. You are not to talk, you are not to argue, you are not to debate, you are not to discuss. Just being with some souls is so enlightening, so delightful, so much, at, uh, so much experiential. You learn a lot by their presence. I believe energy transfers so quickly. Something happens. And I think what we are doing is letting the things happen. Doing is like becoming. And letting the things happen is like being. Today, we must not forget the day is auspicious because it is Swami Vivekananda's day. It is his birthday today. And what he has said some 150 years back was each soul is potentially divine. And somebody like Arvind Kejriwal also would say the same thing. Don't underestimate the power of a common man. Oh yes. I think both of them are saying the same thing. The common man and he has immense potential is what is being talked about and Swamiji said something 150 years back 
the same thing each soul is potentially divine and on this occasion i only believe that we could reinforce this belief that we are divine and we have a tremendous power don't misuse allah uh, abuse the word common man common man is such a big word and i believe this uh, this is a purpose of uh, our coming together and how did i start uh, this journey i thought maybe i would concentrate on the next generation i thought catch them young would be the better strategy so i started with prabodh academy dealing with the student stress working on their memory concentration and how to write examination i thought that is a better way of uh, influencing the parents also though so they can pay me money and also uh, keep my things moving and also at the same time i can make a small difference into the, into the field of correcting the education system but then i i i found that uh, telling advising children was not sufficient because whatever i tell the children ultimately those are the buyers who influence the decisions consumer consumes and the buyers who influence and those who pay money for the children's education have a bigger say on the children's mind than those who work on with them i thought maybe i have to have an additional strategy to really deal with those other lot who are influencing and buyer in this uh, marketing scenario so i started uh, spreading uh, the knowledge of counseling and psychotherapy and to really legalize and legitimize it i started courses in counseling and psychotherapy running an institute is not my 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 field it is not my cup of tea but really trying and the desire to work on correcting the system i thought i will have to do something to really spread with knowledge talk to the parents talk to the teachers see how i can or uh, we collectively can by that time i had lot of friends who were uh, really working with me with the same mission and purpose so we started this institute of psycho management studies and the courses was just to really lure because when when somebody pays the money no for learning he also needs the evidence that he has learned something so the diploma and degree is just a paper evidence to say that the person has acquired the knowledge and at times we are more concerned with the evidence of the knowledge than the content of the knowledge and the real knowledge which needs to be uh, carried away carried with having uh, started this ipms course started picking up then there was a issue of credibility as to which professional body you belong to and what is your credibility and which is a registered thing and all those things right and then there were a lot of good students who thought we can come together and really make this professional ethical one and a professional one so we formed a professional uh, this professional body called association of counselors and psychotherapists i am proud to say that i am a founder president at, uh, president of this association and dr sapna now is the president of the association so having connected the professionals together and into serious practice then there started a lot of professional practitioners in this profession coming and really working uh, uh, full time for this professional uh, inputs after few years of experience i thought there are some more issues which are beyond the academic domain the educational domain and still affect us it is a common man it is a it is it is a average man it is it is anybody who needs a counseling support Uh, who 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 needs uh, here but then it is not in the formal education format we had our concepts like uh, aadhar swayam siddha and anand mission which i was toying with but which could not pick up the roots were very uh, not very strong last year uh, we had a brainstorming and we thought maybe we can conglomerate these three organizations and come together with something called a swayam shodh because purpose of education is to really evolve purpose of education is to really take our journey of life ahead for a purpose and swayam shodh is precisely this and uh, friends uh, let me share my personal experience and professional experience with you when i started dealing with the clients uh, through the art they possess uh, and uh, uh, encouraging and helping and enthusing them to really perform on the uh, art format which they are comfortable with there was a lot of therapeutic effect and the presentation today on the dais in the first session was precisely the evidence which will validate what i'm saying right now i have many people whom who who had some issues and who had some tall talent which they never bothered about expressing they started overcoming their issues uh, in their personal lives and also in the other areas like professional and uh, other social uh, areas बहुत अच्छा लगने लगा और स्वयं शोध का जन्म वैसे हुआ है स्वयं शोध के लिए ऐसा व्यक्ति भी मिला जिसने स्वयं शोध को खुद की शोध भी बना दिया है आपने यहाँ पे जो देखा होगा डॉक्टर चेतन रेवतकर यू आर सीइंग हिज प्रेजेंस सी देर आर पीपल प्रेजेंट हियर एंड देर इज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ वन पर्सन 
and it is Swayam Shodh. When we express ourselves the, what shall I say, जब हम अपने को खुद को प्रगट करते हैं तो तो ऑटोमेटिक इफेक्ट होता है यू हैव नॉट टू रियली नाउ नाउ यू हैव नॉट टू क्रिएट ए इफेक्ट ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट इफेक्ट इट सेल्फ इज काउंटर प्रोडक्टिव टू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ इन्फ्लुएंसिंग इन्फ्लुएंसिंग इज नॉट अबाउट ट्राइंग टू ट्राइंग टू डू समथिंग इन्फ्लुएंसिंग इज वॉट हैपन्स वेन यू आर देयर प्रेजेंस एंड यू वुड फाइंड फ्रेंड्स नाउ द नेक्स्ट सेशन ऑल्सो यू फाइंड दैट द प्रेजेंस वुड बी फील्ड बाई यू स्वयं शो दीज एक्सप्लोर योर सेल्फ The purpose of education is to master ourselves, not to master the subjects. Unfortunately, our education system has always really focused on mastering the subjects called physics, chemistry, mathematics, biology, or whatever. And having mastered the subject to the MSc, PhD, DSc level, we think that we have now become the we have become somebody which we could be proud of. And all those people who are proud of their qualifications, I find them very miserable in their personal lives. I find him creating negativities around him. I find him alienating themselves from the rest. How can education do this to us? I don't think this is the right education. Swayam Shod, finding yourself has to be the purpose of education. And on this occasion, I would say, uh, this Swayam Shod is the strongest arm of Prabodh Educational Trust. And we are going to strengthen it more further. Uh, I do not know how I am going to do this. But with your blessings, with support, with your presence, with your wishes, I am sure the things are going to move ahead. I think I should not be exceeding that my time because uh, there are a lot of things to happen, and uh, I am sure you are all very eager to listen to Dr. Padma Bhushan, uh, uh, B.M. Hegde. Uh, you, quite a few must have seen him on the YouTube or wherever. He is a revolutionary, and uh, uh, I feel blessed when he has uh, he has come over here on our small request and making a big difference for us uh, and friends. when somebody from the outside comes it is not to really uh, it is not to really uh, uh, what shall i say uh, say that he has he knows something more or bigger it is just to say that we are all connected uh, interdependent interrelated interconnected and all those things and in, in his presence i want i want to honor few of our own friends colleagues achievers uh, who did something great uh, on this occasion it has to be celebration how do we celebrate we have to honor we have to felicitate we have to create a, uh, and then the people whom we create uh, felicitate and appreciate should they be uh, should they be from the uh, different uh, group no i i think i think hamare logon ka satkar humne khud karna chahiye aaj hum apne logon ka apno ke samne apno ke haath se satkar karna chahte hain jinhone samaj mein apne apne kshetra mein kuch bada kaam kiya hai यहाँ के गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर तीन जो हैं उन्होंने अपने अपने क्षेत्रों में बहुत बड़ा योगदान दिया है कुछ अलग कर रहे हैं और उन्होंने अलग किया ये तो हम आज एक सिंबोलिकली कह रहे हैं हर व्यक्ति हम में से हमने जैसे कहा आम आदमी कॉमन मैन ईच सोल पोटेंशियल डिवाइन वैसे इनकी डिविनिटी एक्सप्रेस हो गई है बाकी लोगों की भी एक्सप्रेस हो रही है अगले साल आने वाले वर्षों में मुझे पता विश्वास है कि बाकी लोगों का भी हम ऐसे ही कुछ सम्मान होगा होते रहेगा वैसे हमारे साथ और एक व्यक्ति है जिन्होंने काउंसलिंग क्षेत्र में बहुत बड़ा कार्य किया है हमने इस साल समुपदेशक शिरोमणि नाम का एक अवार्ड एक पारितोषिक एक एक साइटेशन हम इस बार प्रनाउंस करने जाने वाले हैं दैट इज गोइंग टू कम वट शर से राइट नाउ आई एम स्पीच रेस आई एम वर्ल्ड आई डोंट हैव वर्ड्स टू एक्सप्रेस माई ग्रेटिट्यूड माई थैंक्स माई overwhelmed heart i don't know what to speak thank you so much friend listen to listening to me i i'm sure i am today very uh, not very coherent but still when you are emotional you need not be coherent you need not be logical i am not that rational i know but then emotionality binds us i know you all love me i love you all thank you so much thank you so much dr prabodh i would like